Hey there, welcome back. Good to see you, you're just in time. We're gonna go on a little voyage today. We're gonna draw ourselves a ship out at sea with a nice beautiful sunset. Now, you can follow along with me super easy and if you've never drawn in your life. So go ahead, grab these simple ingredients, crayons, and a piece of paper. All right, now all we need is a little can-do attitude and these days, you know, we're taking it day by day and everything's a little bit new so hey, Today, why don't we just become an artist? All right, so let's go ahead and uh, look at what we're working on today. All right, so look at that, we got a nice sunset. So we're gonna be working with yellows, oranges, and reds. So these colors often seem to be the ones that we see commonly in the sunset. Now, it's best if you do try to go in that order, yellow, orange, to red. Now you'll notice the crayons we're gonna to use today are yellow, orange, pink, and red. So we got a bonus color in there. And we're basically just gonna go in that order and you're gonna see that it's not about the technique or how you draw a cloud. It's okay if yours looks completely different than mine. It's really about the order of colors we use and just fill in the page with them. So, all right, buckle up, let's go. First thing, let's go ahead and uh, check out where we want the horizon line. So right where the ship is setting. Okay, so in the example, it's about a quarter of the way up the page. So let's go ahead and draw that line right across. Perfect. So now, from here, we're gonna go ahead and put our orange crayon back down and grab our yellow one. So we're gonna start by coloring from the horizon line up to about halfway up the page. Now, the thing is, is we want to leave just enough space for the sun to shine through. So, my crayon, you could tell, is like an artist's crayon. It's a regular little crayon, but I, it's not perfect. It's not super sharp. It's kind of wound down. I'm going to use the side of it. And look how much space you can fill, actually, really quickly with it. So, what I'm doing first off is kind of fill in yellow using, uh, I'd say, Firm, but not extra firm pressure and I'm going all the way to the edges of my page notice how I'm leaving the center open this is where the sunlight is going to be now what I'll do is once I get about halfway up I'll come across and I'll start sort of caging in that sunlight that white of the paper so check that out now from here it's just about how you want that sunlight to break through this yellow and I'm going a little bit past the halfway point just so I could have some room to blend with the orange. And look how quick we did that. You can really fill up a page quite fast with a crayon. Okay, so right here, we got a big old amount of sun. I usually like to make it kind of abstract. So what I'll do is I'll just pull some of this yellow in and sort of make interesting shapes out of it. Because oftentimes, when we look straight at the sun, especially a sunset, it's not a perfect circle. It kind of just makes these fun shapes. I like to kind of do these S type curves and things like that. So now that we have that there, let's go ahead and switch to our orange crayon. Alrighty. So here's our orange one. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll start at the top of the page and we're gonna move down and then into the yellow area. And we'll come almost to the horizon but not all the way and kind of getting softer with our crayon as we go. So up here, really hard. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of think like I'm making clouds. Now the clouds I'm gonna go for today are kind of these diagonal shapes and they stretch long across the page. But notice how this isn't a straight line. It's really quite organic and I don't plan it. You can have a little cloud grow out from it. Remember, this can look a bajillion different ways and still look completely awesome. It's about the colors we're using. So now, notice how I'm bringing that orange over the yellow too. And as I do get closer to the horizon, I'll go ahead and just lessen up on the pressure. There we go. And definitely, we wanna make sure that we keep the area around the sunlight a nice yellow. These gaps in the sky, we'll go ahead and we'll fill those later. So 
You can leave as many or as little as you like. What's gonna go right there is gonna be that pink. So you could decide right now, how much pink do you want in your sky? You know, this is your sky and the beautiful thing about a sunset, the reason we always go back and look at them over and over again is they're always different. They're always changing. So, you know, you're making something that no one's ever seen today. All right, so that's enough orange for now. Let's go ahead and set that back. Let's move on to our pink crayon. So in these gaps up here, we're gonna go ahead and press really hard, really color in, and get the last bits of the white paper up here so that all that's left in the sky, no other spots of white except the sun. Now here's the thing, notice I'm coloring right over the orange. The orange will still show through. It'll just have a little pink in it. And that's actually kind of nice. It makes the drawing look um, a lot more realistic because oftentimes when we see an orange in the sky or a pink or a yellow, it's really a combination of a bunch of colors. And we just kind of say the closest thing that it looks to us that we can figure out. But really, the trick to drawing really nice things is get a bit of color everywhere, right? Okay, so now let's grab that red. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna put in some of the uh, darker clouds up at the top of the sky. Now, you don't have to go right over your orange ones, but you could go over them if you'd like, or you could just add all new ones. So maybe I'll start on one of them, and I'm gonna press firm, and then maybe I'll kind of drift out. You know, now it looks like, okay, that orange kept going on, but it went red here. Get creative, if anything. This should feel meditative. It shouldn't feel like, oh gosh, I'm not putting it in the right spot or anything. And you know what? Practice makes perfect, right? Look at how many different types of shapes I'm making, but it still looks like clouds. This is easier than your brain will make you think. So often we're told we can't, we can't, we can't figure this out. Well, you know, we're in a time where look around. We're having to figure out a lot of things, how to do things differently, right? I hope you're doing okay. Well, look at that. Okay, now what we're gonna do is give it one more pass. Now, this is really important because all we've done is put just kind of a light layer of color. Now we're gonna make it really bright. So, I wanna stay away from the white, stay away from right next to the white, and move towards the edge where it's yellow. Sorry, dropped my crayon. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and now press real firm, real firm. We want this to look real golden and I'm gonna go as far as I can until I get near that white but not too close not too close now this should feel really 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 saturated now we don't know what that word means saturated it just means full of color it means that pretty much what I'm putting down should be the maximum that the crayon can put down so if your page is starting to get a little thick right now, that's fine. Now, check out what I'm doing. I'm going and even pushing a little bit of that yellow up into some of my clouds because, hey, that's some of that sunlight down there just hitting the top of the sky. You don't have to be too careful about where you put it. And press hard if it's not showing. Okay, before I do put this yellow down, I'm gonna put a little bit of that color down here in the water. And I'm gonna just kind of fill it without being too careful. Because eventually, as you can see up there, this water, it's gonna be mostly dark. So all that this serves as is a reflection of that sky above so that in between the dark areas in the water, we see a little bit of that light in the sky. All right. Now, remember, if you feel like I'm going too fast or anything, feel free to pause at any time and I'll be right here when you get back. And also remember, you can use smaller sized paper and you can also do it again afterwards, right? And you can really spend even maybe double the amount of time on it. Okay, let's go back to orange. What we're gonna do is just some last sort of saturating highlights. I'm gonna go right over the spots where I went with orange. Now you don't have to do it, uh, you know, like a robot every little bit, every little bit. 
not like that at all. What I'll do is just here and there, really what I'm looking for is just a nice, nice, interesting, bright, bright sky. And I'll take a little bit of the orange here and there, maybe as a stray cloud down here in that golden area. Perfect. And then maybe just a little orange up on top of that pink, just for a last touch. Perfect. Okay, so what we'll do with the orange now is just go like we did with the yellow down in the water with it. So let's go ahead. Just fill it in. Now, if you don't feel this perfectly, you know, like a flat color, don't worry, that's not the idea. The idea really is just to have a combination of orange and yellow. Now notice, all we've been doing is sideways uh, crayon marks. We haven't done anything that's really, uh, so to speak, detail or specific shapes. It's all been about color next to color, and look how bright this piece of paper is getting just with some simple old crayons. Gee, aren't you gonna be stoked to get back to school and uh, show your teachers what you've been up to? Okay, well, looks like we're done with the color. Let's go ahead and put in the ship. All right, time to bust out the black. So, looking at our ship up here, basically we have a rectangle, like a long rectangle, with a triangle in the front. So what I'm gonna do is, First, figure out how long I want the ship to be. Kind of visualize it. Once you see it, go ahead and draw the bottom of it, right at the top of the water. Perfect. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and find out how tall I want it to be. So, I'll say about right here. Now, this is not uh, necessarily something you have to strictly adhere to. If you want a different shape uh, ship, like you want to do a pirate ship or you want to do anything else, go for it. I'm just here to sort of uh, draw alongside you, you know, not here to tell you necessarily what to draw, just help you here and there. Okay, look at that, we made ourselves a nice ship. So let's put those final details in. Okay, I just like to lay a flat rectangle right on top and I imagine this is the area where maybe inside people would be eating or dancing. Look at these crayons, they're just dropping like flies. They know that we don't need them anymore. It's okay, but we still love them. All right, now here goes. I'm gonna do a couple steam stacks. Now you could do one, two, three, four, however many you feel is right. I'm gonna go full blast and do four. I like to do the leaning back ones, like say the Titanic or the Queen Mary. So here we go. And you know, you don't gotta be overly careful with it. I'm just trying to evenly space them. Okay, so now we have our ship. All we have to do from here is just color it in. So let's take a moment and together, we'll go ahead and we'll color in this ship. Now I'm just going straight to the edges of the lines and if you have trouble coloring over anything, say that you're like trying to color over uh, the yellow or something and it's just not going over, just give it two coats. I guarantee you can cover it with this black and it'll be awesome because this black on top of this white and yellow is just gonna be so popping. The ship is gonna stand out from literally across the room. All right, so now we're into the big spot. So remember, if I'm going too fast for you, you can always go ahead and pause because after this, we'll be heading towards the last step, which is just filling in the water. There we go, get the front of our ship. I went a little bit out of the lines, but it's okay. Look at that, easy fix. Look at that, everything's good. How are you doing by the way? I hope that, uh, you know, you're not missing your friends too much and if you are, hopefully with, you know, technology these days, you guys are doing plenty of hanging out. And, you know, heck, it's time for new things. I'd like to say that this is a vacation for us. Every day for me feels like a vacation. That's just, that's a mind state to have, but check it out, on vacation, even the you know hardest working people still work. The people that are the most curious still learn. Now, just because you're not having someone show you how to do everything in a classroom, doesn't mean that you don't have the entire internet right there at your fingertips. So many of the things that I've learned to do were not in a classroom. I didn't always know how to paint. 
I didn't always know how to draw. And a lot of it, I learned just looking up artists I admire on the internet. So, hey, this is a perfect time to maybe figure out how you like to learn and maybe the things you like to learn, but definitely keep on learning, right? Okay, great job by the way. So, let's finish this off by putting in our water. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start way in the distance and I'm gonna move down the page. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do long, thin lines. So these will be like the thinnest lines I've done so far. I'm not pressing too hard and I'm letting little gaps of the color come through. Now, I'm just kind of moving down the page, almost like a printer, like I'm not going backwards. As the page comes out the printer, it's out the printer. There's no going back. Basically, from here to the bottom of the page is the end of our journey which great job, by the way. I hope that y'all are real proud of your work and if there's any part that you really had a tough time with, don't be discouraged, give it another shot. I'd love to see how all of your uh, pieces have turned out so far. Now, here I'm about halfway down. Notice that I'm gonna start making my black lines a little thicker and I'm gonna make them a, a little bit further away from each other. And it's also fun to just make cool patterns. So look, I'll make that one stop and then I'll maybe start one here. And really, just like the clouds, you can make this look a million ways and it's still gonna feel like water. Look at that, look at that. Because the magical thing about drawing is that so much of it is just context. You know, these scribbly lines are not what water really looks like, but when the human eye sees this ship right here and it sees all of this you know, water going on, it automatically just says, look at that. That must be a ship out to sea with a nice, beautiful sunset. And you know, I think together we've made it to the end of our journey today. You know, and I really wanna say thank you for tuning in. And uh, if this was hard for you, then you know, it'll only get easier from here. I would love again to see these drawings that you did. So feel free to post them and share them. And please stop in again. I'll be posting tomorrow. So definitely, I can't wait to get back and uh, get into art class.